2020 will go down in history as the year of the coronavirus pandemic. But the head of the UN World Food Programme has warned of another threat on the horizon. Uh, at the same time, while we're dealing with COVID-19 pandemic, we're also on the brink of a hunger pandemic. Almost 700 million people went without enough to eat in 2019, and the United Nations has warned another 132 million could be added to that number in 2020. COVID-19 has exacerbated the problem. But even before the pandemic, hunger was on the rise because of poverty, a growing population, disease, conflict, and climate change. The climate crisis could lead to an extra 183 million people facing hunger by 2050, as our warming planet affects how food is grown and distributed. So how is climate change impacting the world's food production? How is it linked to who eats well and who doesn't? And as we work towards a greener post-COVID world, what changes could ensure hunger doesn't become the next global pandemic? When we talk about climate change, we often talk about the impact that climate is going to have on human society or the environment in the future. Climate change is already impacting us and has already impacted us. The number of climate change related disasters like extreme heat, droughts and floods has doubled since the early 1990s. Harvests have been shrinking and crops ravaged by pests, like the enormous swarms of locusts that devastated East Africa. Then there are plant diseases, which are becoming harder to predict as they move with the changing climate and appear in areas they weren't seen before. Climate change is also making food less nutritious. When crops like wheat, corn, rice and soy are exposed to CO2 at levels predicted for 2050, the plants lose as much as 10% of their zinc, 5% of their iron and 8% of their protein content. The oceans are affected too. As waters get warmer, it's forcing fish that prefer certain temperatures to move to new areas. I mean, those who currently rely on fish to eat might need to find new sources of food in the future. Rising temperatures also mean regions that were once suitable for growing particular crops just aren't anymore. As jobs become scarce or there's not a livelihood anymore to work on a farm or to own a farm, people will leave that rural area and go to cities and try to find a, a different kind of wage earning job, right? And as it becomes harder to get a good harvest from existing farmland and the population and demand for food grows, farming has expanded to forests. Take Brazil's Amazon. As the forest is cleared for farming, conditions become warmer and drier, which has led to worsening droughts. And then there's water. Agriculture uses around 70% of the world's fresh water, which is becoming more scarce. In most parts of the world, far too little is known about groundwater supplies and how to use them sustainably to water crops and plants. In Sub-Saharan Africa, only 1% of cultivated land is equipped for groundwater irrigation, compared to 14% in Asia. But in other countries, too much water can be a problem too. To give you an example from my country, Bangladesh, we were hit by a major cyclone, Amphan, in May, and then followed by major floods, which devastated the, uh, the rice crop that people were growing in that time. We couldn't harvest it in time. And that has led to significant shortfall in food uh, and a shortfall in uh, agricultural production. So how does climate change affect who can access food and who can't? It's just going to be harder to get access to a healthy diet. Costs of, of certain foods will, will go up, particularly perishable foods. Those perishable foods tend to be the healthier foods. So these foods will, will become more expensive because it's harder to ship those across oceans, roads, in a climate disrupted society. Among the people most likely to suffer from this are the poor communities in cities who may not have the money to compete. Climate change has already had the largest impact on the populations least able to respond to it. That impact is probably going to get worse in the future and going to continue to most negatively impact those populations that can't respond because of either lack of resources, food, lack of money. It could affect those who produce food too. Subsistence farmers grow crops just for themselves and their families. Extreme weather and pests could see whole crops wiped out, leaving them with nothing. And on a global scale, countries that depend heavily on food imports like wheat and rice could also suffer if global food supplies fall short and exporting countries keep more food for their own people. 
So what changes can be made as we look to rebuild a greener, post-COVID world? One of the surest ways is to shift people's diet to include more plant-based food. The food that we grow and move and eat is, is significantly affected by climate change. And at the same time, food systems, that which is what produces our diets, is also contributing to climate change and environmental degradation. The global food system creates around a quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. So what we found is that food systems and food systems alone would prevent us achieving the 1.5C climate change target within about 30 to 45 years. Meat and dairy production have the biggest carbon footprint because of the huge amounts of grain, water and land they take to produce. Eating less of both can help ensure there's enough food for everyone and cut planet heating emissions. As the threat to harvests increases, one solution is to increase their diversity. New drought and flood resistant crop varieties are also being developed and are being used more widely, though their success can also depend on good seasonal weather forecasting. Countries highly vulnerable to hunger and climate change often have few resources to help them to adapt. So financial support is also important. Poor people, particularly poor farmers living in poor countries like my country, Bangladesh, are the victims. They are the ones who are suffering the impacts. Uh, at the same time, uh, very often the kinds of uh, interventions that are required in terms of reducing emissions or adapting to the impacts of climate change also can cause more inequities if they are not done in a manner that takes into account the needs and, and requirements of the most vulnerable uh, communities. The impact of climate change on food security is deepening the existing inequalities on our planet. So what's the challenge? So the, the COVID-19 uh, crisis is a harbinger of, of the climate change crisis on a longer time scale. Going forward, what we need to be thinking of is how do we build redundancy and resilience and diversity in this so that we are not in this uh, singular, uh, very vulnerable modality, which works well when things are working well, but it collapses when some problems occur. 